Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the video, another GameStop update. It seems like you guys really enjoyed that video that I posted two days ago. So here we are back with another one. We got a lot to discuss. A lot has changed as far as the major players. A lot has changed for the company as well. And of course, as we as we know, the stock has gone up and down and up and down like a roller coaster. So we're gonna go through all of that today. And really quick, if you enjoyed this video, let me know if I'm gonna make some more. I got a whole bunch more personal finance issues. Let me know down in the comments below. It looks like you guys really enjoyed that last video I put out about GameStop. And of course, don't remember to subscribe. It helps me out. And if it helps me out, I can help you out by making more videos like this. Advertisement over, let's get right back into it. All right, I'm just looking at my notes just like I was last time. So, major, major news. Roaring Kitty has sold his options no longer has any of his options and he now owns nine million and one thousand shares i was looking on reddit and it looks like turn my phone on silent so that i don't get a text message it breaks my train of thought looking on reddit it looks like there is a significance to that number maybe ryan cohen who maybe he had that amount of shares but it looks like kitty sold his options or exercised his options and then it looks like he actually bought more shares I actually, I'm glad he bought his option because I was trying to wrap my head around how options work. I couldn't understand if he buys them, if he sells them, if he exercises them, what does that do to the stock? Looks like it didn't do a whole lot to the stock. It's only been moving up and down three points on the daily, but that's huge news. He is holding a very, very big share, very big portion of GameStop stock at this moment. Other news, a couple days old now, but GameStop has completed their 75 million share sell-off. Sounds like what GameStop was gonna do is they saw a spike in their share price. They wanted to actually go ahead and take some profits, which is very smart in my opinion, especially for a company that's constantly losing money. So they sold those off, no problem there. I think that took a lot of negative pressure off the market because were they gonna do it all at once? What, what were they done with it? What's going on? We no longer have to worry about them selling off 75 million shares and the stock just takes a nosedive. Now that being said, they could come out tomorrow, they could come out later today and actually say, we're gonna do another share sell and that's gonna put even more negative pressure to the stock. That's why, like I always say in these videos, you gotta have an exit plan. You have to know what happens if the stock takes a nosedive, what happens if the stock skyrockets. I know we all want it to go to $10,000, gonna make us all very rich, but what happens if it nosedives down to $10 a share? It could happen. This is a very heavily traded stock. Now, it looks like the shareholder meeting has been postponed. They had some technical difficulties, kind of whatever, technical difficulties. I used to work in IT, so I know what it's like. But they also have $4 billion cash on hand. This is huge because they have a ginormous financial runway. Now, if they play their cards right, they could actually make a profitable business model. I haven't done a whole lot of research on their business model, but if anyone's old enough to remember, Blockbuster, it's pretty much what they are. They're Blockbuster, they're sitting there, they have stores out in the open, brick and mortar stores in malls, and that's where all their business comes from. Supposedly they're losing money on that. Blockbuster, we saw what happened to it. If you're old enough like me, that's their business model. With that being said, with that $4 billion cash on hand, they can invest that money into a basic S&P 500 fund, and if they make 10% per year, that is going to net them $400 million per year. So if they lose $300 million for their business model, but they're in the positive, you know, $400 million, 400 minus 300 is $100 million, that's pretty cool. And of course, that's assuming a 10% return, even so if it's a 5% return, it's $200 million. Any, what I'm trying to say is $4 billion cash invested in the S&P 500, never think about it ever again. If it goes up 10%, you're making $400 million. That is a great, great thing that they can do. All right, let's go ahead and do a screen share. I know you guys love those screen shares. Actually, let me know if you think you like those screen shares. What am I doing? What am I doing? All right, screen recording right now. Let's take a look at what was going on. So this was the 12th. It spiked up all the way to $33 great to see as we can see it started to fall all the way down to $28 later on in the day and then it looks like right around it closed at about $26 right there 
Yeah, it closed. It spiked up a bit at close. 340 it was at 26. So it closed between 25 27 dollars. The next day, that was Thursday. It looks like it went up a bit, up and down. You know, it's like a little roller coaster here. And then it looks like I think, believe it was last night when Roaring Kitty made that tweet saying that he went ahead and sold his or he exercised his options. But then it looks like start of the market today. Where are we? Where are we? Start of the market, we started strong, $30, and then we took a little bit of a roller coaster way down. Not too crazy, definitely not like a, didn't fall off a cliff like it did up here, but definitely did a, you know, quite a correction right here. Only, only two pound, points, two pounds, only two points right here. Looks like it's just going up and down a couple of dollars here and there. Who knows where it's gonna go next? Like I was saying, there's a lot of negative pressure off the stock and it just depends on how much volume it's, you know, what do traders wanna do? Or, you know, I know a lot of people hate the stock. They think that the company is a dead business model. I happen to think that, yeah, they, they have to change their business model. A lot of people love the stock. Hold, I get it, 10,000. I'd love, I'd love for the stock to go to 30, 40, 50, 100 dollars and beyond tomorrow. Make me a very rich person, very rich man. And it probably may, I hope it happens because it'll make you rich as well. So I want to talk about my strategy, right? So my strategy, like I was saying, my entry point was actually all the way up 34, 38 was my entry point. So it doesn't, it ha, I have not break, broken even on this yet, right? I'm losing more money, losing a little bit less money, losing more money, a little bit less. I actually, I'm not sure because when things like this happen, and this is what you gotta be careful with because I've been burned with this multiple times. When we see a huge nosedive like this, our instinct wants us to sell because we're thinking this is no good. But then when we see something run up like crazy, our instinct says, we gotta buy, we gotta buy. This morning I was at the gym watching this. And I said, oh man, should I buy? Should I sell? No, I'm not gonna sell. I I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. It it's gonna go higher. Boom, look what happened. Damn, I should have sold. I should have taken profits. What, you know, oh look, a little bit of hope. Uh, and then it's just kind of like, mm, you know, kind of almost flatlining right over here. And if we really look back and, you know, it's not really, look at the, the big picture right here. It's only going up and down two points. Up and down two points. I've tried to trade a stock going up and down two points before. Half the time it works, half the time it doesn't. And it's not like I'm gonna turn 50 shares into 100 shares, I'll turn 50 shares into 52 shares. But then you could turn 50 shares into 45 shares. Not really gonna break the bank, but the thing you've also gotta be careful about if you're gonna start doing in-day trades like that intraday trading, I'm would think it's called or I believe it's called again I'm not a financial professional here you are going to have to pay taxes so if you make a thousand dollars in this stuff that is going to take out you know you're going to pay taxes on that definitely be careful of that something else I've been burned with with my favorite Tesla stock so that's just something that I was going through again this is not my first go around in the rodeo so I, I know just to kind of hold now I did move some money aside I do have some cash on hand. If this does crash down, I am going to be able to buy it, but I always have to remember, what do I think the company is going to go in the next six months, the next year? Because Kitty is still active, and I think that's a big catalyst, and there's a lot of eyes on this stock right now. What's gonna happen in two or three months when we don't hear from Boring Kitty? Party's over, that's it. The stock's just gonna go do what it wants. If, it's, if it settles at $20, 18, 22, 18, 22, that's what could happen, but He's still holding, maybe he'll buy it. We don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't even know what 10 minutes brings. So it's very hard to predict this stuff. We can kind of see, we can kind of think what's more probable, but you know, we, we get thrown curveballs in markets. That's why it's, it's super hard to, to predict what happens. If, you're, if you wanna be a long-term investor, that's the only way you can guarantee you're gonna make money in the long run. Go buy an S&P 500 fund, make 10%. Another video for another time though. But my price targets, Originally, my price targets were at, a fifth, at $50, I was gonna sell some shares or most of the shares, take some profits. At $20, I was gonna buy. Since there's not a whole lot of trading volume, you know, we're not seeing, we're not seeing crazy amounts of trade where it goes from 26 to 47 like it did just last week. It's starting to cool down a bit. I think I'm going to take, a, I'm gonna take my price targets and narrow them. So maybe I will have a, I will have a, 
buy target of if it goes to 25 I'll buy more shares and if it goes to 35 or above I'll end up selling some shares now if it does go to 35 right now what am I gonna be making what I say 34 38 and be making 50 cents per share not a whole lot of money just something to go out eat dinner on a Saturday night but also when you when it goes down and you buy it more you're going to bring that cost down. So if I bought a bunch of shares at $25 right now, my overall cost of the stock is probably going to be somewhere maybe around $32. And that is actually what, if you've ever heard the term dollar cost, dollar cost averaging, the more you buy it, you dollar cost average, buy a little bit here, buy a little bit here, and over time, you're actually going to you're actually going to make more money over time because you're buying when it's high, but then when it crashes, you're buying, which again, very important. Don't put all your money in one stock. You can do it if you want. I don't recommend it. Again, do this at your own risk. I'm not a financial advisor. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is stop losses. Stop losses can be good. Stop losses can be very good. Help you sleep at night, right? I have a stop loss set at, I believe, $18 right now. So if this stock takes a nosedive to $10, it's going to sell at $18. I'm good. I'm not going to go all the way down. And then my plan for that is just to assess the situation where that happens, see what the news is like in the market, see what GameStop is, they come out with any positive or negative news, and then that's going to allow me to make a decent decision, half decent decision at least, to either buy more stock when it's around $10, if it does go that low, I'm not saying it will, or should I just exit altogether and figure something else out. My belief is, and you don't have to agree with me if you don't want to, this is more of a flavor of the week right now. Everyone's eyes are on it because of Roaring Kitty and because of what's going on in the markets right now with this stock. I still believe it's a meme stock. And sure, you know, if GameStop's got a lot of cash, doesn't mean the stock can't crash down because of day traders. You know, and just because if if the, if if the company is doing horribly, right? The company's doing horribly, then that who's to say that it could go all the way up? We saw that happen back around the the 2020 2021 era when everyone was was inside for the that panorama we had you know the panoramic picture panorama anyway my stop losses at $18 something I might I might bring it up now stop losses are actually good like I said could help you sleep at night but I've been burned with stop losses before because let's make believe my stop loss was at $30 it was at 33 right here right or no that's a bad example that's a bad example Let's make believe my stop loss was at $28, right? Stop loss is right here. So you figure you sell right here, right? Oh, stop loss worked out, stop loss worked out, right? If it sold right here, that's 325, the 12th. Just 24 hours about later, you're right back at $28, and then the rest of the day, oh man, should I buy, I shouldn't have bought. That's happened to me before. You set a stop loss right here, or this is a better example over here. Set a stop loss, let's, let's make believe the stop loss is at $22 or $23. $23 is over here. So it rides all the way down, triggers a sell right here. Now look, you missed out on all these gains all right here. You gotta wait for it to come all the way back down to $23, $22, whatever I said before. I think I said $22. You gotta wait till it comes all the way back down here to buy it at the price you sold it. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're buy, you're selling low, buying high, which is not what we want to do. Anyway, that's just my take on it. You know, you take your own risk, do a whole bunch of research. This is a pretty exciting time in the stock market right now. Roaring Kitty's going strong. I'm holding right now as it stands. I'm just not really letting my emotions. I'm not panic selling. I'm not FOMO buying. I'm not doing anything like that. And that's what I'd recommend for you. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you agree with me, even if you disagree with me, comments were great on the last video we did about this. There were some awesome comments. There were even some funny comments as well. So as always, invest safe. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great weekend. And as always, thanks for watching.